I welcome you all uh, to the lecture number 27 and it comes under module number 11. So, module 11 is about emotional intelligence part 2 and module 10 was part 1. So, overall this is lecture number 27 and uh, in this module we are we have been talking about different skills one by one. So, in today's lecture we will be talking about another important skills related to emotional intelligence and that is empathy. So, just to give you a brief recap of what we have discussed in the last lecture, we in the last lecture we are focusing on uh, the one of the important skills related to emotional intelligence and that is self motivation. So, in that context we tried to discuss what is the concept of motivation and more specifically what is self motivation and how this self motivation is basically the same thing as we all, all also discuss in the context of intrinsic motivation. Uh, and we have discussed various dimensions of self motivation and we try to uh, distinguish between the concept of intrinsic motivation which is same as self motivation and, and extrinsic motivation uh, which is basically uh, when we are motivated from some and from an kind of so something that is outside of us. It could be anything that kind of motivates us to do something which is outside of us. Intrinsic motivation is about when we are motivated from inside because of the interest or um, the intri intrinsic value of doing something. So, in that context we have discussed self determination theory and we try to understand how self determination theory talks about both intrinsic motivation as well as extrinsic motivation and we try to see uh, how intrinsic motivation kind of is addressed in the self determination theory and uh, how that can be promoted. So, in that context we have also discussed three layers and four C's of self motivation which are basically connected to the self determination theory. So, these are some of the important concepts that we have discussed. We try to define self motivation, understood the various dimensions of it and also we try to look at it from a particular theoretical, theoretical perspective which is self determination theory and we try to understand how it can be promoted. So, today we will be talking about empathy. In that context, we will be talking about uh, the difference between empathy, sympathy and compassion. We will also talk about the different components of empathy. We will be also talking about the role of mirror neuron system in the context of empathy and uh, we will also talk about how to cultivate empathy and what is the right kind of empathy and all these dimensions we will be talking about in today's lecture. So, let us uh, uh, start today's lecture. So, what is the meaning of the term empathy? Uh, we have kind of touched upon this idea uh, many times throughout this uh, course, but today we will be kind of uh, go deeper into this concept of empathy because it is one of the most important concepts related to emotional intelligence. Without empathy, we cannot be emotionally intelligent. So, almost every theories of emotional intelligence gives emphasis on this concept of empathy. So, this term empathy is derived from the uh, Greek word empathia, which basically means filling into. So, it is so that is the root word from where this word basically derived. So, basically, when we are faced with emotions of another individual, individuals frequently experience a natural inclination to adopt and share that same emotional state. So, it is a natural kind of human tendency that whenever we kind of encounter emotions of another individual, we kind of experience kind of share the same emotion, uh, the emotions of another individual influences us and we try to understand and share that emotion. So, empathy is basically connected to that. So, basically in this way, basically if another person is sorrows can transform into your own sorrow and another's happiness can become another person's happiness. So, if when we say see emotions, in other individual it kind of uh, kind of influences us in a similar way. Not necessarily in all the context, but this is generally how we experience it for we are influenced by the emotions of others. So, this kind of response where an observer mirrors the emotional experiences of another person has been termed as empathy. So, the empathy is more like you mirror you expect you kind of observe emotions in other individual and you mirror the same emotion within yourself. So, that is kind of empathy. So, there is an another term which is connected to that is called emotional contagion, uh, where it can be very unconsciously another person's influence uh, emotions can influence you 
and you can become sad because of another person's sadness, it could be very automatically and unconsciously transferred to another person. Uh, but in case of empathy, it is more conscious in a sense that you are aware that you are mirroring the emotions of another person. So, that awareness may not be there in the case of emotional contagion. So, this empathy is frequently described as a basically is the capacity of an individual to imagine themselves in someone else's position or someone else's situation, essentially putting themselves in the another person's shoes. So, that is the basic idea. Everybody understand um, uh, when we talk about empathy, we are basically talking about is, is your ability to put yourself in another positions or and trying to understand from their perspective how they are looking at the world and how they are experiencing emotions. So, it is like very deep kind of identification with another person's mental world and understanding how they are how they are kind of experiencing world from their perspective you are trying to understand. So, that is an empathy part. So, it involves the skills of understanding and acknowledging uh, their emotions and effectively expressing these feelings to others. So, it involves understanding and expressing of emotions of others. Empathy involves being mindful of the feelings, needs and concerns of the others. So, it basically comes from deeper understanding of our other individual and then you mirror those uh, uh, without understanding you cannot be empathetic to others, others indi other individual. So, it compasses a range of competencies including understanding others, facilitating their development, embracing the diversity and being uh, politically aware and so on. So, it comes from your understanding of others life situations and their context and then only you can understand and the kind of uh, share their emotions. So, it could be because the result of diverse other aspect of emotional intelligence. In humans, empathy even can emerge in the absence of another person simply through thoughts or imagination. So, if a person another person may not be physically present in front of you or just you can imagine situation of another person and kind of you can be empathetic towards that person. So, it need not be all the time that another person has to be physically present in front of you to feel empathy. Uh, so, it is important that you know uh, that empathy relies on the ability to distinguish between oneself and others. So, that is very important. So, empathy basically comes from you realize it is directly coming from another person's emotional experiences, you are also mirroring that. So, that realization is very clear. Recognizing that another individual is the origin of one's emotion. So, you whatever you are feeling at that moment of empathy, it is that emotion is arising from another individual. So, this crucial distinction sets empathy from emotional contagion that we said. Emotional contagion is a broad term where you may not be even conscious that you know others' emotions are influencing you, or just being in a situation where others are feeling sad, you may be feeling sad, but you may not be very conscious that the sadness is coming from another individual. So, it is a kind of infecting others emotions are infecting you it you may not be very conscious of it so emotional contagion can include those aspects but in case of empathy it is more conscious and you you are aware that you know your emotion is arising on behalf of another individual so that distinction is very clear so empathic effect sharing represents just one of the potential reaction to someone else's emotion so others emotions we can kind of react to others emotion in so many ways empathy is one aspect other emotions, other kind of phenomena such as you know other kind of emotions such as envy, compassion uh, can also arise in the context of another's emotions, but empathy is also one such state of emotion. So, what distinguishes empathy is this unique ability to provide insight into another person's internal state by reconstructing a representation of that state within the observer. So, when you so that is the unique aspects of empathy is that you when you observe another person emotional experiences, you kind of represent their internal state within yourself, construct it and try to understand how others other others are pers uh, perceiving the world and uh, processing information. So, that is something very unique aspects of empathy. So, empathy is one of the reason why human beings are able to lead a social life and uh, we are connected to other. So, there is a sense of bonding connection all one of the major reason why people are bonded and connected to other or kind of there is an harmonious relationship within individuals. One of the reason is the, the sense of empathy that people have without empathy we will not be able to strongly connect it to other individuals. So, it is a kind of psychological super glue that connects people and uh, uh, undergirds cooperation and kindness. It is because of empathy that we are showing kindness to other individual. We are concerned about others' well-being. Uh, we are 
bonding with each other, forming communities, forming societies. So, all these uh, typical human social aspects are basically results of empathy. Without empathy, it will not be able to connect with other individual in a deeper sense. So, it is more like a psychological super glue that connects individual and help us to experience uh, many positive emotions like you know helping others individuals or experiencing kindness and so on. So, in that sense it is very important to understand empathy and its implication in human behavior and the social world. So, empathy recognizes a key characteristics of emotional intelligence and uh, it is kind of uh, all theories talks about it. Without empathy, uh, we cannot really talk about emotional intelligence. So, just we have understood this whole concept of empathy in terms of understanding the definition of it. Now, imagine a world without empathy. Can we imagine a human world without empathy? If there is no empathy, what will happen to the whole human world and social fabric of human world? So, here are some of the, some of the situations that are there. Uh, let us consider a world devoid of empathy and people are not empathetic, let us say in a world and reflect what will be the consequence of such a world what will be the situations of such a world. For example, imagine a child crying due to hunger, disparately needing their mother's response, but receiving none. No one is coming to rescue or helping that child who is in need of food. So, if there is no empathy, probably people will not come for support of that child. Picture yourself in, in a very painful situation in a hospital longing for the attention of nurse who neglects to attend you, somebody you need lot attention because of certain medical emergency and no one is coming to support you. Envision being unable to work due to old age yet finding no one is he he offering help or support you in your old age. Visualize lying on the road seriously injured from an accident with no one willing to help you. So, you are on an accident, you are accident victim and no one is coming to help you experience emotional turmoil, yearning to share your feelings with someone only to find no one is willing to listen. When you are really in dire need of sharing your experiences and emotional pain and no one is willing to listen to you. Imagine being consumed by depression after a major career disappointment, lacking anyone to console or provide encouragement. In the state of sadness and depression, no one is there to encourage you. So, like this. So, if you see all this situation like contemplating uh, no, heartache of expecting support from your children in old age and they are abandoning you, putting yourself in the shoes of a blind person just to imagine and struggling to let us say cross a street and no one is willing to offer assistance. So, these are some of the situations, these are examples where let us say there is no empathy in the world. In all these situations, people will suffer, no one will come to rescue those kind of individuals and support them and it will be kind of like of completely chaos, chaotic situation. So, these are some of the examples that shows to what extent empathy is important in the human world and social world to, to, to lead a harmonious life in the human world. If there is no empathy in all these situations, people will feel helpless and, and, and they will be in a situation so that they cannot get any support from other individual. So, this situation em, kind of emphasizes the profound repercussion of a world lacking empathy. So, this clearly shows how important this concept is. It highlights the immense value of empathy in addressing human needs, providing comfort, fostering connection and supporting one another through life's challenges. So, it is at the root of human kindness, human support system, human helping nature and so on. At the root of it is empathy. So, it has lot of practical repercussion in human life. So, there are three terms which are generally uh, used and some people use them very synonymously, but they are kind of different. One is empathy, another is sympathy and another is compassion. So, let us understand the difference between these terms. So, sympathy is a term uh, which uh, refers to feeling of kind of pity and sorrow for someone else situation or suffering. If someone is suffering or someone is in a bad situation, when we feel sense of sorrow for them or sense of pity. So, kind of you feel bad okay, somebody is going through some bad face. So, that feeling is sympathy. So, it involves recognizing and acknowledging another person's emotions and without necessarily sharing the same experience. So, in empathy, you kind of share their experience and kind of put, try to understand and identify with their situation and try to share their emotional experience. In this case of sympathy, you may not share their emotions, you just understand and kind of 
show concern for their situation. So, that is sympathy. So, empathy is little more meter uh, kind of little deeper and uh, more identification happens in the case of empathy. So, sympathy often involves expressing care. So, you show care and uh, try to uh, kind of show and express all your concerns and support for someone, but it may not involve the same level of emotional connection and understanding as empathy. So, only thing is that in terms of emotions, it is almost similar, but in case of empathy, it is much more intense and much more deeper and uh, where you identify with that person's situations and try to see from their perspective. So, that kind of identification is not there in sympathy, it is more of just seeing the situation of another person and you are showing some care and some uh, kind of concern for them. So, that is sympathy. Empathy as we also saying, it also involves not just kind of understanding or looking at other person's life and showing concern, it is more of sharing their feelings and kind of putting yourself in their situations and trying to understand the, the world from their perspective. So, it is deeper in that sense. So, empathy requires emotional connection and actively seeking understanding and validate someone else feeling. It is focused on the emotions and perspective of other persons. So, in that sense, it is a little deeper connection. So, empathy involves a deeper emotional connection with others as it requires genuine experiencing and connecting with the emotions. Sympathy is kind of showing concern, but may not involve same level of emotional engagement. It focuses more on acknowledging and expressing care for someone. So, you acknowledge that somebody is in a bad situation and you show concern for them. So, that is sympathy without necessarily fully comprehending their perspective. You may not completely understand how they are, what they are going through and how they are understanding or looking at the world. That is empathy. In this case, you may not be really involved too much, but only show just acknowledge that the person is in a bad situation and you are kind of showing concern. Compassion on the other hand is kind of little bit more deeper even deeper than empathy. Uh, it is a more broader concept uh, that than sympathy and even empathy. It encompasses empathy and sympathy, but goes beyond them. So, it is kind of includes both the aspects sympathy as well as empathy and it also goes beyond that. So, compassion involves not only understanding and acknowledging someone uh, someone's emotion, but also feeling genuine desire to elevate their suffering and helping in some way. So, when you feel compassion, you also show sympathy as well as empathy and also you try to do something in terms of actions to reduce their sufferings. So, that is compassion. So, it is much little bit broader concept. So, it combines empathy and sympathy with a sense of action that you want to do something for the other individual to alleviate their distress with a genuine use to provide comfort, support or assistance to the person in need. So, it is a little bit broader concept and include both the sympathy, sympathy as well as empathy is included under compassion. Just to summarize, empathy is understanding and sharing others emotions. So, it is includes understanding as well as sharing other emotions. You just also kind of experience their emotions. Sympathy involves feeling for sorrow for some one situation and compassion em encompasses both empathy and sympathy, while also it em emphasizing the intention to elevate suffering and offer help and support. So, compassion is little broader and it includes both the concept and plus it includes actions to elevate sufferings of other individual. So, so another kind of uh, is a diagram that shows um, uh, Purushottamam uh, in his book showed it the intensity in terms of intensity, you can kind of divide this concept from pity to compassion. So, it is just difference in the intensity of the emotion in each of this phase. So, at the lowest level it is pity, where you just feel bad for someone's situation. So, that is a sense of pity. Sympathy, you not only just feel bad, you also show concern to other individual. Physical display of pity, hoping to relieve the pain of suffering. Empathy is again little bit more deeper where you kind of share the emotion of other and perspective of other individual you try to understand. In compassion, it includes both sympathy as well as empathy and also there is a desire to relieve the person from the pain and actively seeking solutions. So, this is just if you see from the intensity point of view from pity, sympathy is little bit more intense in terms of emotion. Then 
empathy is a little bit more intense in terms of emotion as compared to sympathy and compassion is more at the highest level of intensity of emotion uh, in terms of showing concern and uh, the kind of understanding other individual. So, kind of lower intensity to higher intensity we can move from pity to sympathy to empathy to compassion. So, just the differences or intensity increases from one to another. So, empathy tried basically uh, Goldman uh, in his uh, model he also talks about empathy in detail and he said empathy has three component. He kind of broadly defined empathy where kind of compassion and other aspects are included in the empathy itself. So, that is how Goldman uh, kind of uh, defined uh, empathy. So, he said empathy has three important components. One is cognitive empathy, another is emotional empathy and third is empathy concern. So, let us see what are, what are these three uh, dim uh, dimensions of empathy. So, in cognitive empathy basically means and the name suggests it is more at the mental level. So, cognitive empathy also known as perspective taking empathy. It refers to the ability to understand and intellectually grasp the thoughts, beliefs and emotions of others. So, you intellectually try to understand how the other person is looking at the world or how that person is going through something. So, you intellectually try to grasp the situation. So, you try to take perspective of another individual. So, that is more little bit more mental aspects of it. So, cognition also involves mentally understanding first. So, that is the cognitive part of it. So, you intellectually try to understand their situation from their perspective. So, that is cognitive empathy. So, it kind of putting yourself in someone else shoes. the typical definition that we say you try to kind of put uh, and look through the others perspective and see the world from their perspective. So, cognitive empathy relies on mental processes such as perspective shifting. So, you shift your perspective from yourself to another individual's perspective theory of mind and imagining how someone else might think or feel. So, kind of you shift your perspective and try to understand world from another person's perspective mentally and intellectually. So, that is the con cognitive empathy. Emotional empathy uh, is more about affective empathy it is also called as it involves sharing and experiencing the emotions of other. So, you share the emotion of other and experience their emotion. So, when you kind of able to take perspective of another person you share their emotions. So, their emotion becomes like your own emotions and you kind of uh, understand from their perspective. So, it is the capacity to feel what someone else is feeling as if their emotions are contagious. So, so emotional empathy is more about kind of understanding or capacity to feel how others are feeling. To what extent you can really identify yourself with that person and feel the way they are feeling. So, that is the emotional empathy. So, emotionally how much you are able to identify with another person and look and uh, kind of experience their emotion. So, emotional empathy enables individuals to resonate with and respond emotionally to the experiences and emotional state of others. So, that emotional reaction comes from the emotional empathy part. It involves the visceral and auto automatic emotional reaction that mirrors the emotions of other person. So, that is something uh, called as emotional empathy. The third one is called as an empathic concern. Uh, it also referred to as compassionate empathy. So, kind of Goldman included compassion as also under the empathy itself. So, he kind of more broadly included it as a important aspects of empathy or empathic compassion uh, which goes beyond understanding and sharing emotion. It involves a genuine and compassionate concern for the well-being of others. So, in the other aspects you try to understand others perspective mentally in the cognitive component and in the emotional component you try to feel the other's perspective. In empathic concern you not only beyond those feelings and taking perspective you are genuinely concerned to concerned about the other person and try to remove their problems and sufferings and distress. So, in that sense it is kind of one step ahead of it ahead of other two steps. So, empathic concerns motivates individuals to take action and help alleviate the sufferings and difficulties faced by others. So, it is a concern to remove when you understand others perspective you also uh, feel, feel for the other and try to remove or alleviate their sufferings. So, that is the empathic concern. It includes a sense of warmth, kindness and desire to support and assist those in need. So, here assistance is more 
given focus, how can one assist other individual? So, that is empathic concern. So, it is more action oriented. So, one is cognitive mental oriented, another is emotional oriented component, and third one is more action oriented component. So, these are the three important components of empathy. So, in summary, cognitive empathy focuses on understanding the thoughts and perspective of others. Emotional empathy involves the sharing and experiencing the emotion of other. Empathic concern en encompasses the compassionate and action oriented response to the well being and needs of the others. So, that is what we have discussed now. So, these different aspects of empathy collectively contribute to our ability to connect. So, all these components are important in terms of genuinely or holistically you know kind of uh, understanding and experiencing empathy. Now, let us discuss the concept of mirror neurosis system. So, biologically at the neurological level, uh, empathy that we individuals may be hardwired for empathy. So, so it may not be always just kind of things that we learn. Uh, one aspect of empathy could be kind of hardware in terms of in our nervous system or in the brain itself. So, let us try to understand in terms of physiological aspects or in terms of uh, brain, are there any kind of specific aspects which kind of explain uh, behaviors related to empathy. So, one candidate or one aspects of uh, brain or neuron, ne neural system which can explain empathy as a human behavior uh, that is called as a mirror neuron system. So, mirror neuron is a type of neuron that exhibits activity both when an animal performs the specific action and when it observes another animal performing the same action. So, when we say mirror neurons basically these are the neurons that mirrors others actions or emotions. Uh, so, there are set of neurons in the human brain as well as animal brain. Uh, it kind of uh, exhibits activity, it becomes active when one human or animal in both cases some animals also has that, they perform certain actions. So, when certain actions are performed like you pick something from with your hand or something. So, certain neurons will fire and they will kind of become active when you do certain actions. But the, in case of mirror neurons, the same neuron will become active when you see someone else is doing the same thing. So, when you see someone else is picking the object, then mirror neurons will become active even just looking at other person doing the same thing. So, it kind of mirrors even if you are yourself not doing the action and looking at another person doing the same action, the same neur neuron will become active just observing others doing the same thing. So, it mirrors as if you yourself is doing the same action. So, that is called the mirror neurons. So, this mirror neuron system has been proposed as the biological basis of social behavior including lot of social cognitions uh, including empathy. So, one of the reasons why people feel empathy for other individuals, uh, it could be because of this hardwired aspect of brain uh, particularly the mirror neurons could be responsible for this. So, this encompasses as a broad range of phenomena which includes uh, lot of aspects including empathy. Now, the, the research was uh, initial research for this empath, uh, mirror neuron was conducted by uh, Rezalati and his colleagues uh, in 1990s which then led to the discovery of this mirror neurons. So, this mirror neurons are a type of brain cell that are active both when an individual performs the action. So, when somebody performs certain actions obviously, the mm, that neurons will be active you are doing something. And the same neuron will become active when you observe someone else performing the same action. So, it mirrors even when someone else is doing the same thing, it almost activates as if you are doing the same thing. So, it kind of it mirrors the other section also uh, in your brain. So, this neurons mirrors the observed section hence their name is called mirror neurons. It mirrors other section as if you are doing that. So, Rezalati and his teams were originally studying the motor cortex of macaw monkeys. So, they are doing uh, some experiment on monkeys and trying to identify uh, the neurons that are responsible for motor actions or some uh, movements of the hands and body parts. Specifically, they are focusing on neurons uh, that are involved in controlling hand and mouth movements. So, they are kind of looking at which neurons are responsible for movement of hand and mouth 
in the monkeys, Macau monkeys. So, they used electrodes, micro electrodes to record the activity of uh, individual neurons in the premotor cortex area of the brain, uh, which we will be just showing where is, the, where is that area and the inferior parietal lobule of the monkey's brain. So, these two areas they were looking at whether uh, neurons in these areas are responsible for hand and mouth movement. In that experiment they interestingly or accidentally found that something is unexpected that they found the same some of these recorded neurons in those areas not only fired when the monkeys performed the specific hand and mouth movements. So, obviously when the monkey was doing some hand movement like grasping objects and so on or mouth movement this neurons in those areas became active or they fired which is which was measured by micro electrodes. They also found that these neurons also fired when monkeys observed a researcher or another monkey performing the same movement. When they observe researcher is also gripping an object for example, the same neurons got active or another monkey doing the same thing. So, this phenomena was initially observed in relation to actions such as reaching and grasping objects. So, in that context it was found initially. So, it was more like this. So, so this is like just an uh, pictorial depiction of that. So, here basically at rest those neurons were not having any signal. So, they are not active monkey was not doing anything. When the monkey grasped an object the mirror neuron fired means that neuron became active because it was using some motor actions or grasping some objects. Interestingly, they found when the researcher was grasping an object in front of the mirror in, in, in front of the monkey, same neuron actually fired. In this case, the monkey was not grasping any object, but the researcher was grasping the object. So, just observing another person doing the same action, the same neuron got fired. So, this discovery led Rezalati and his colleagues to propose the existence of mirror neurons. So, these specific neurons in those areas. Uh, they said they could mirror others others action as if they themselves are or we ourselves are doing that actions. Subsequent research in humans has provided evidence for similar state of brain human brains knowing as mirror system. So, it was also then subsequently found in the human brain as well. fMRI studies have also demonstrated that certain brain areas in humans such as premotor cortex that we have already kind of will be now looking at and the inferior parietal lobe. Uh, shows activity both when individuals perform action and when they observe other performing the same actions. So, this suggests the presence of mirror like response in the human as well. So, particularly uh, these are some of the brain re regions which where this mirror neurons are kind of observed particularly this uh, this one you know this region of parietal lobe and uh, motor cortex, primary motor cortex and some here. So, the neurons in these two regions are kind of uh, this mirror neurons are kind of uh, are kind of observed in these regions. But obviously, there is an inherent challenge in actually identifying very specific neurons because identifying each or specific one by one neurons is very difficult in this kind of researches because mostly we can see in a region the neurons are firing. Uh, so, directly studying individual neurons in human brain is very complex and very difficult and challenging. Research have yet to provide definitive proof of existence of mirror neurons at the individual single cell level, but uh, majority of the studies in human have relied on non-invasive techniques like um, fMRI studies which provided insights into the brain activity to a larger scale and cannot isolate activity of individual neurons, but at least it identified certain regions where uh, neurons could act like a mirror neurons. So, it is worth noting that the absence of even direct evidence of individual neurons in humans does not negate the existence of mirror syst system of neurons, where there is a you no know, neurons which are connected to each other and you know, certain regions of the brain, they could act like mirror neurons. Uh, especially when somebody kind of reconstruct uh, or those neurons fires when they observe others doing the actions. So, this term mirror neurons often refers to this broader concept on this network of brain regions and cells 
uh, which help us to understand the imitation behaviors that when we imitate somebody else and look at someone else doing something those neuron gets fire so it kind of can explain how humans and animals imitate the behavior of another individual uh, rather just um, it's not about just individual cells the mirror system in humans is believed to involve a distributed network of interconnecting brain regions rather than isolated mirror neurons so it is more like a system of neuron rather than one or two individual neurons so these neurons allow individuals to understand and interpret the actions and intentions of other by internally simulating the observed action in their own brain so these are the neurons which help us to imitate others so the kind of this mm, this nerve cells help us to reconstruct world from another perspective when you see someone else so you kind of uh, behavior in someone else you kind uh, this neurons help us to reconstruct or simulate this actions of another individual so in that sense we understand how others perspective finding of mirror neurons had a very simply significant implications for our understanding of human cognitions and social behavior interactions and so on it provided a neural mechanism how human being can understand and mimic the actions of other how we are able to mimic or kind of copy other individuals and do exactly same things this neuron could be one of the important reasons or help us to do those such kind of imitation behaviors because they help us to reconstruct in our own world uh, some behavior of some other individual mentally and uh, distribute to the uh, kind of development of social skills uh, kind of contribute to the social skills language acquisitions and ability to empathize for others individual so for um, creation and for uh, experiencing empathy we need to understand others in perspective and others behavior we need to reconstruct in our own mind so this mirror neuron could be one of the important candidates that help us to empathize with other individual and learn many other social skills and language skills and so on so for example child learns language by kind of imitating or repeating what other says so this all these behaviors or how they learn different behaviors they all could be connected to a lot of these mirror neurons actions so since the discovery uh, mirror neurons have been studied extensively in both humans and animals the discovery of mirror neurons opened up many avenues of research and obviously still it is going on and it has a profound implication in understanding human behavior and brain functions especially understanding things like empathy and social behavior now how more specifically mirror neurons are connected to empathy so let us see some of the kind of possible connections so a lot of many researchers have actually studied mirror neurons in the context of empathy uh, like uh, marco lecoboni galiz and kizers and such researchers who kind of did a lot of research specifically in the context of mirror neurons and empathy and uh, they found mirror neurons could be one of the potential mechanism for empathy why people experience empathy because this mirror neurons help us kind of experience empathy or it kind of gives us ability to empathize with other individual the idea is that when we observe someone else actions or emotions so specifically in the context of empathy it is emotion when we observe someone else emotions mirror neurons in our brains mirror systems and mirror systems or mirror neurons get activated so you see someone else showing some emotions so those kind of systems are already there within us so mirror neurons activates those uh, you know systems creating a neural simulation of the observed action and emotions so it creates a neural simulation how others are experiencing emotion because we also experience all these emotions that mirror neurons help us to activate and create and simulate the world of the other individual within us this simulation allows us to mirror or internally simulate the experiences of others which may contribute to our understanding and sharing of their emotional states so this is how one of the biological mechanism could be this neurons which help us to reconstruct world of other individual or experiences of another individual and that is how you we experience their world views their emotional experience and share them through empathy the activation of mirror neurons during observation could potentially lead to uh, vicarious experiences of the emotional experience so that when we see someone else get influence so mirror neurons could be at the mecha biological mechanisms of it so when we witness someone expressing happiness or sadness the mirror neuron system 
may activate similar neural circuits associated with our own experiences. So, you see someone is sad, we also have a system of sadness within already as hardwired. So, mirror neurons could activate those similar neural circuits associated with those experiences and allows us to understand how that person is experiencing because those emotions systems are already within us. Mirror neurons could activate those systems that are already there emotions and help us to empathize with other person. So, it is important to note also that mirror neurons are just one component of a larger network involved in empathy. So, empathy is a very complex ability of humans and mirror neurons could be one important aspect to it. It cannot explain every aspect of empathy obviously, but at least at the biological level this could also kind of gives us capacity for empathy. But empathy could also include many other aspects and mirror neuron could be one important part of those whole networks of explanations in the context of empathy. So, empathy is a multifaceted construct and it involves cognitive processes like mental processes, things like perspective taking, it also include mentalizing or ability to contribute mental states of others or understand others. It also includes things like emotion regulations. Mirror neurons alone cannot fully account for everything, but you know this could be one important aspect of it. So, overall mirror neurons are a promising area of research for understanding empathy, but they are just one piece of a larger puzzle. Uh, further studies obviously are needed to kind of and it is still ongoing and more and more clarity will probably come in the future research. So, what empathy can predict? So, if we experience empathy or if a person has higher empathy, what kind of behavior it can predict? So, let us see some of the research findings. So, research has shown that empathy can predict many positive behaviors such as indicators of prosocial behavior such as forgiveness, volunteering and helping and it is negatively associated with aggression and bullying. So, research indicate that people who have higher empathy or empathy if it is present, it can lead to or at least it is associated with many positive be other behavior such as higher empathy can lead to or it kind of positively connected with prosocial behaviors, various aspects of prosocial behavior where it is about helping other individual. So, one person, person may experience more forgiveness, the person can volunteer or help other individual more. Uh, and they will experience less aggression and and bullying all these things will be much lesser in an individual who has higher empathy. Research also shows that you know uh, empathy uh, is also positively correlated with kind of charitable donation behavior. So, people who are more empathetic they do more donations charitable donations and so on. Uh, Empathy can also override non-cooperations uh, causing people to be more generous and forgiving and less retaliative. So, these are again kind of connected to the first findings. So, people who are more empathetic they are generally more generous, more forgiving and less kind of retaliative in terms of non-cooperation and those kind of things they will be less to that and more of generous and forgiving. Empathy can also help people adopt more positive attitudes and helping behavior towards stigmatized group. So, research has also shown especially people who, are, who have higher empathy, they also show more helping behavior towards stigmatized group, some group of individuals where society at large may not look at them positively such as disabled and homeless individuals, those with AIDS and so on. So, generally people with higher empathy show much more concern and helping behavior towards this marginalized population also. So, so it is kind of uh, research uh, findings are very clear that empathy is associated with many positive uh, behaviors, most of them are actually connected to helping behavior. Now, when we talk about empathy, uh, research also shows that you know empathy can have uh, different aspects and uh, particularly the right kind of empathy is important in terms of which can lead to more positive outcomes. Probably all kinds of empathy may not lead to all the positive outcomes. Some one some aspects of empathy are could be called as a right kind of empathy, which may be associated with all these positive things that we have discussed now. 
Now, despite all these potential advantages, empathy alone does not guarantee positive social outcomes. Not necessarily empathy, all kinds of empathy will lead to positive social behavior. According to some research, the cultivation of empathy for effective assistant necessitates right kind of strategy or right kind of empathy. So, if it is not correctly, correct empathy is not there, then it can become a draining skill. So, empathy because taking perspective of another individual sometimes could be very draining and it can negatively impact the individual who is empathetic. Too much of empathy sometimes can lead to a lot of emotional drain because you are kind of getting into the heads of other individual and trying to understand and so others emotion can influence you also very negatively. So, excessive identification with someone else emotions can sometimes induce stress, trigger cardiovascular stress response similar to the physiological reaction that would experience in painful and threatening situations. So, it could kind of to, because you are identified with another individuals, it can induce a lot of stress and distress depending on what others is in experiencing and uh, can lead to many as physiological negative impact of the stress itself. So, empathy by directing helping behavior primarily uh, towards individuals with one's one group may even impede helping behaviors in certain context. Uh, if it is not the right kind of empathy, can also promote or kind of impede helping behavior in some other some context. So, therefore, how one employs empathy and perspective may determine the difference out. So, what is this right kind of empathy? So, there are two types of empathy uh, or kind of in terms of how person empathize with the other person. So, there could be two possible ways. One is self oriented perspective taking or self oriented in this case of empathy you are it is self oriented empathy and other is other oriented perspective taking. So, let us see how these two are different and how they can lead to different outcomes. So, self oriented perspective taking or empathy it basically talks about could be lead to lot of this negative impacts. It is more about imagining oneself in someone else situation. So, you are you are kind of putting yourself in someone else situation. So, you are suffering through along with that individual. So, when self oriented perspective taking is means you are putting in their positions and so if other person is suffering you are also suffering. So, that is the self oriented perspective taking. So, this could be very draining in some sense and uh, it could lead to fatigue and may not lead to many positive outcomes. Obviously, it can be connect obviously lead to a lot of uh, positive intention and doing uh, good for other individual, but it can lead to fatigue and uh, stress and which can kind of hamper or impede kind of many positive outcomes also. So, so, engaging in self oriented perspective taking where individuals imagine themselves in another person position can lead to significant personal distress thereby hindering the display of many times pro social behavior which could be because of compassion fatigue. So, you yourself could be suffering with the individuals and may not be able to do the right kind of actions that are re required and may not lead to many positive outcomes that were discussed earlier. So, that is one thing. So, you are putting yourself in another person's perspective and kind of suffering because of too much of identification with that person. So, it can lead to fatigue and stress and so on. On the other hand, other oriented perspective taking or empathy is about imagine and understand others person's point of view. So, you are not just putting yourself in their position, you just try to imagine and understand how the other person is going through. Rather rather than putting yourself in their position itself. So, that is called as an other oriented perspective taking. It is more about imagining, understanding how others are, what is their point of view. So, kind of objectivity distance is maintained in some sense and that can lead to many positive impact because then that emotional drain may not happen in this case and grasp the experiences in a broader sense. So, this form of empathy uh, actually proves most beneficial for both the giver and the receiver and is characterized by other oriented response. So, engaging in this kind of perspective taking can lead to the development of empathic concern commonly referred as compassion which can be perceived as an emotional response emanating from cognitive processes and uh, it can st stimulate helping behavior and many other things. So, 
both are empathy obviously in the first case is also empathy can lead to also kind of understanding and showing concern identifying with another person but the problem is too much of identification can lead to compassion fatigue and stress and so on and if yourself you yourself suffer probably you may not be able to help other individuals so in case of other oriented perspective some objectivity and distance is maintained and you just understand how that person is looking at identification is there but you are not suffering as much as the other in the self oriented perspective it is more of an objectively understanding and trying your best to help that person so uh, some of the steps where you know empathy can be developed or what are the steps that can lead to empathic be em behavior related to empathy so this is kind of uh, purushottamam uh, books i have i have taken it so he according to him the first is one need to recognize so that is the first thing you recognize the emotions of other individual understanding and recognizing is very important so you look and observe and recognize uh, the emotions and the situation of another person then you remove your own shoes your own biases in, in your own filters and try to understand without any judgment and prejudices try to see how others are perceiving the world and experiencing at that moment if you have your own filters and biases and judgment you will not be able to understand how others person is experiencing so to understand others perspective you have to remove your own biases and judgments then only you can identify with another person so that's very important third is once you remove your own ju judgments and biases you can where another person shoes and kind of feel and understand from their perspective so it's about feeling imagining experiencing mindset motives aspiration and beliefs of another individuals and how it is kind of um, experiencing in the in that moment and the last one is is respond when you understand others perspective you can respond appro appro appropriately in that situation so kind of this is kind of broader steps that one can take so the next the last most important question is can we cultivate empathy can we develop empathy or is it like hard word some people are only empathic others are not empathic is it like that so or can we cultivate that so let us uh, try to understand this question or address this questions so empathy uh, for some individual they may have automatically higher empathy is innate biologically they are more empathy oriented you know they have more sense of concern and compassion for other individual other individual slowly acquires it uh, through different life experiences uh, or some deliberately learn they learn it uh, by seeing the kind of positive impact of it uh, or focusing on taking perspective of another individual they develop it so developing this skill can help reduce compassion fatigue so kind of right kind of empathy people can also learn so obviously some people are hardware in terms of some individuals are more empathic than others so those individual differences will be there there may be some biological reasons to it but a large chunk of empathy itself can be learned you know so at little research shows that it's a learnable things specifically about understanding others perspective and it can be learned so there is a possibility of enhancing empathy by effectively teaching individuals how to practice it so by la by effectively learning about it and different aspects of it one can learn it and kind of enhance it so abramson uh, in 2021 recently listed some of the important strategies to cultivate empathy or kind of develop empathy within individuals so this so we'll be discussing some of the important steps or some of the important things that one can do to develop and cultivate empathy so one is the first is desire to grow in empathy so obviously you cannot develop empathy if you don't have any desire for it or you don't see the value in it then obviously you cannot do anything about it the, so the, so the first important step is that you have to desire uh, to learn about it and uh, to develop this because you see the value of empathy in the human world without this you know you cannot imagine a sane world so if you value this concept if you understand this concept and you want to grow it that that is the first step you know the, so aspiration to foster empathy can act as a driving force so if you see the value of it automatically you will try to enhance it and learn more about it try to implement it this is the first crucial step of increasing empathy is embracing a growth mindset 
which involves believing in one's potential to develop and expert empathic abilities. So, their growth mindset, I can grow and develop it, develop in it. So, that is very important. People who hold a belief that empathy can be developed are more likely to exert effort in empathizing that. Those who believe that it can be learned, actually they learn it more. So, for instance, uh, those individuals may actively seek, um, seek to empathize with individuals who are unfamiliar or different from themselves. This contrast with individuals who perceive empathy as a fixed rate and are less inclined to invest in an effort. So, the moment you see that it is a learnable thing, uh, people such people generally even are able to empathize with even unfamiliar or people who are different from them, they can empathize with them. So, that is related to your growth mindset. So, that is the first thing. Second thing is exposure to differences. So, one thing is that to understand or develop empathy, you need to understand others world views. Then only you can understand how others are feeling, how others are experiencing life. If you just are focused on your own understanding and own view of world, then you cannot understand others perspective. To understand others perspective, it is very important to understand, focus and get exposed to differences in the opinions and world views of other individual. The more you understand the differences, the more you will be able to empathize with them. Without understanding others perspective, others world views, you cannot empathize with them. So, that is very important. So, exposure to differences. So, to effectively imagining another person perspective, one should have a richer context of understanding of others is very important. So, engaging with diverse form of media such as reading books, watching movies, featuring protagonists from different racial backgrounds or actively participating in someone else culture can provide a backdrop for adopting someone else viewpoint. To understand especially the or empathize with people who are very different, it is, it is important to understand about their world views by reading books about it, by watching movies related to them or even different racial backgrounds or actively participating in others cultural world views like festivals and you know, kind of connecting with them socially. So, all these things can provide deeper understanding of others perspective and help us to develop empathy for even people who are different. Those who are similar, one can kind of connect with them very easily, but if they are different, some of these steps can help. So, by paying closer attention to others, regardless of whether one is actively engaging in perspective taking individuals, are more likely to develop heightened concern from others. So, paying attention, understanding without attention you cannot understand anything. So, everything boils to your attention. Third important thing is sometimes reading fictions could also help us to develop empathy. How that could do it? So, engaging with works of fiction and other character driven stories can contribute to the deeper comprehension of both others and the world. So, if you see fictions and stories, these are all reflection of real social world. Whatever stories or fictions are there, their kind of characters are taking from our real world only. So, even reading fictional characters um, can contribute to understanding of various personalities and different types of individuals and uh, that can help us, you know, that by immersing ourselves in narratives, we can enhance our capacity to understand real individuals in the real world simultaneously. So, the idea is the more you get exposed to different uh, world views and different types of characters, more we can empathize with them. Third is harnessing the power of oxytocin. Oxytocin as a hormone which has been found to be very important in terms of making connections and bonds with other individual. So, whenever we kind of form an affectionate relationship with other individual, oxytocin as a hormone gets released and it plays very important role in forming social if bo bonding. So, known for the social effects, oxytocin as a hormone uh, contributes to the facilitation of empathy. It has the ability to induce helping response even among individuals who lack blood relationships. So, lot of activities which can kind of related to release of oxytocin, we can do them and kind of that can also enhance our empathy biologically uh, in that sense. So, by engaging oxytocin releasing behavior such as eye contact, making eye contact with people, gentle physical touch. So, th those are kind of uh, behaviors that also releases oxytocin in the brain and help us to bond with people. 
making eye contact, gently uh, physically touching people of whoever is in, uh, in our you know whatever in that context. Human can harness the potential of oxytocin to foster empathy and promote helping behavior within specific context. So, kind of uh, biologically this also power can be used in whatever context possible. Obviously, it cannot uh, some of this thing may not be possible in every context, but this power of oxytocin can also be used if possible in certain context that can also help us or create more bonds and F help us to experience empathy. Fourth important thing is to identify common grounds with other individual, you know. So, we all have multiple identities in the social world. So, same person can be father, same person can be a son, same person can be a leader. So, we have multiple identities. So, many times conflict happens because we focus on one identity with another individuals where there is a conflict. So, we see differences, focus on the differences, then conflict happens. If you can find common grounds with other individuals, then it will also help us to empathize with them and kind of create bonds. So, that is something very important and we can find out because we all have multiple identities. It also needs to focus on another important aspects of identity, which can be common with another individual. So, why, and this is an effective method to enhance this motivation for empathy is manipulating the perception of who belongs to you in your in group. So, many times people I am I am a part of a group and other individuals are out group means they are part of another group then differences are created and then, then you are not able to kind of empathize with other individual. The moment you see common grounds and put them in your own in group then it creates a common ground and help us to empathize and understand them. So, to cultivate empathy in your own interactions, prioritize identifying similarities rather than fixating on the differences. For example, uh, despite having opposing political ideologies, let us say there are two individuals, they have opposing political ideologies. So, so if they focus on that identity only, then they will have, have conflicts because you believe in one ideology, another person believe in another ideology. And all the time, if you are only in that identities, when you are meeting that person, more likely to be, we will have a conflict and may not understand each other. So, you and your neighbor may discover that your child are of the same age and attend the same school. Let us say these two individuals who are neighbor, they can find common ground that is let us say that one common ground could be both have a children of the same or kind of uh, of the same age group and attend the same school. So, that could be a common ground. So, if you focus on that aspect probably one will, will will be able to understand others more, more and kind of empathize with each other. So, the idea is that we have multiple identities. If you only focus on differences, identities that leads to differences, it will create more conflicts. To empathize and understand others, it is also important to understand or find out the common grounds that will help us to understand others and empathize with them. So, basically by building upon this similarity or common ground, one can cultivate greater empathy. Uh, as individuals, we encompass multiple identities and part of being socially intelligent involves discovering shared identities or common identities. So, that is an important part of empathy as well as so emotional intelligence. The fifth important aspect is that understanding your blocks. So, many times we are not able to empathize with other individual because there is a block. One may have some negative biases towards a group of individual or something. So, this could be a block. Uh, so, one need to understand those blocks and work on those blocks to kind of enhance the empathy. So, that is very important to overcome these various and promote prosocial behavior, paying attention to personal patterns and focusing on areas where connecting with others and understanding their experiences is difficult. Sometimes for all of us, it is difficult to empathize with certain individuals. It could be one individual because of certain experiences or it could be a group of individuals which for whom we might have many prejudices and stereotypes uh, and we may dislike that group itself. So, those may be blocks and one need to understand those blocks, uh, work towards it. That could be another, another important way of developing empathy. For instance, uh, if you find challenging to be around certain individuals or groups, you do not like kind of uh, no, not able to empathize with them or that is very challenging. 
confronting this difficulty by intentionally spending time with them or kind of understanding them could be one of the ways so this could be one of the ways reflecting on a time when you had a negative outlook and trying to understand it during this interaction it is crucial to listen attentively without interrupting or formulating immediate rebuttals or responses so kind of removing your own biases and judgment is very important to empathize with someone else then only we can understand others perspective so wherever possible we can address those blocks if those blocks are kind of artificially created by our biases and judgments then it is important that we can remove them by understanding those blocks and then only this whole possibility of empathy can come into the picture so there is something very important another block is our assumptions so these are all connected to our thought processes it is more about that we may have many assumptions and automatic reaction uh, which can uh, related to racism in everyday interactions related to prejudices and so on so those aspects are kind of related to our assumptions so we need to catch ourselves making a negative assumptions many times these assumptions are very unconscious and automatic we need to catch those when it is expressing in a real life situations that i am behaving negatively with a person simply without any other reasons without any proper reason simply because of my biases so when one need to catch oneself in those negative assumptions so embracing this mindset of continuous questioning and catching oneself in all this is how one need to grow in life and this is like the mindset of a scientist regularly reassessing your assumptions of life you need to reassess and questions am i is this assumption right if not right we need to change it so those unconscious assumptions also needs to be looked at that can foster empathy and deeper understanding so these are some of the things about empathy so it's very important empathy without empathy we cannot really imagine a sane world harmonious world so it is the foundation of peaceful and happy human existence so it's very important that we human beings the more they have empathy the better the world will be and uh, in that context it is understanding of empathy is very important to also for behaving emotionally intelligently and we need we can also need to we can also develop that whole quality by what different aspects that we have already discussed so with this i will stop here and we'll talk about uh, other skills in the next lecture thank you mm-hmm.